How's it going guys? I uh, just wanted to pop on here today and go a little more in depth into the FRC system. Today we'll be covering pails and rails. So we've already gone over what the goals of FRC are. We've talked about cars or controlled articular rotations and how useful they can be. Now we're going to talk about pails and rails and how we implement them. Pails and rails stand for progressive or regressive angular isometric loading. So what that means is we will stretch ourselves, like taking the picture on the right for an example, getting into this 90-90 position, I'm stretching my hip into a point where I have only passive range. What passive range means is I don't have any neural control of this range. I can stretch into this range, but I cannot control this range. So by stretching into this range, we will sit there for two minutes, allowing the stretch to take its effect and allowing us to get a little bit deeper into our passive range. And then from there, we will take isometrics. So isometrics, if we're talking about muscle contractions, we're going like a bicep curl coming up is a concentric. The bicep curl going down is considered the eccentric. And if you were to squeeze as hard as you could at the top of that bicep curl, that would be your isometric contraction. So in this, because we're already in a passive range of motion where we don't have any control, we're able to isometrically contract the tissue around this joint, trying to get it to move the way we want it to. So what this allows us to do, increase and strengthen our active ranges of motion. So if I'm stretching into a greater range of motion than I currently use, and I'm applying neural drive to this range of motion, which will then create new neural pathways, I'm starting to get more control. A couple other things that happen with pails and rails. When we set up in the stretch, we're trying to maximize tension through the muscles and through the joint capsule in which we are using or trying to make better. So we become masters of tension and understanding how tension applies to our body. Now, once the tension has been created and we're stretching and getting maximal tension through the joint, we will then use the law of irradiation as we do our isometrics. And the law of irradiation states, as we went over last week, is any muscle that is contracted will then start recruiting muscle fibers nearby to help it with the contraction. If they're already contracted, well, it will then strengthen the contraction that those previous muscle fibers had. So... Overall, pails and rails are going to be, you know, the big part of what we do as far as increasing your range of motion and giving you better control of your body. The other big thing that they're used for is rehab utilization. So ironically, I threw my back out yesterday for the first time ever, learning what that feels like. I am now utilizing these pails and rails and different things for my rehab. So as of today, I've already done, you know, probably... 30, 40 minutes of FRC. Yesterday I did an hour of FRC. Uh, so just and doing these things to keep those areas working. And we'll kind of go over why this works. All of these are taken directly from the FRC website. So this is nothing that I came up with on my own. Um, the first part is inducing fibroblastic activity in order to promote new protein production and tissue growth. So our body when we get into this passive range and we start using these isometrics, especially at a very high level, like a max effort, we start signaling to the body that new protein production and tissue growth needs to happen in this area, right? So it's showing us, oh, hey, there's something going on here and we need to make this area better. Much like we do with the muscles, when we're doing this to the joints, it allows there for the be new protein production and tissue growth. Now, the influence of fibroblastic deposition of new collagen fibers such that they are laid down along the lines of stress. What this means is that the directions that we're applying the isometric forces in, our body starts laying that tissue down in those directions, allowing us to have better control of our joints trying to move in those said directions. Right? Um, one of the big things that I think is a huge part of using pales rails for rehab or injuries is it prevents post-injury neuromuscular inhibition. So in my example, yesterday when I was squatting and I didn't brace my core and my spine moved and all those muscles now are trying to protect themselves, what I've been slowly doing for the past 24 hours is trying to get them to relax and move through their range of motion like they're supposed to, to know that nothing is going to harm them, right? So a lot of the pain I've been experiencing in the past 24 hours is just my body not willing to relax because it's trying to protect itself. Right? So doing small efforts of pails and rails and things like that to get my joints to sense that, oh, hey, we can move and there's not any issue, will get the body to relax and it'll get that neuromuscular inhibition to not happen. Right, So that's going to be good. Another thing we're going to do when we're doing the pails and rails is we're able to maintain or even increase muscular strength and function around the injured area. 
So if you have a shoulder injury, like my shoulder likes to dislocate, I've been working on maintaining and increasing my muscular strength and function around my shoulder joint. Now I did this muscularly for a decade, just working out and it helped maybe a little bit, but it has not made the difference that, you know, six to eight months of doing this FRC has made. Finally, introducing progressive load bearing in injured passive tissue, thereby initiating progressive adaptation. So since we're inducing progressive load, like when we do the pales rails, it's a progressive thing. We're not just going full balls to the wall in the first go. Uh, like for example, I will do a long duration hold at 50% effort, and then I will do a max effort round. So by doing this, we're initiating progressive adaptation in the ligaments, capsules, fascia, all of that really deep connective tissue that we don't get to target with external load. This is how we can strengthen all of that. So these are going to be the main reasons we would use this for rehab utilization. Um, this even goes for anyone post-surgery, right? So we can do all the same stuff if you just had a surgery to allow you to have better control of that joint capsule and a lot, of, but a lot better control of those muscles as well. So. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out and shoot me a DM. If you're interested in getting some FRC training, uh, you can fill out the application that I have in my bio for coaching, and we can set up and do either Zoom sessions or in person. Thank you.